Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. This is Mr. Neil Wright at here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. This is a, a, a procedure that I performed a while ago. I did upload it, but I didn't narrate over it. Instead, I um, had some captions and um, a description, but I just felt it was necessary to re-upload with some narration. So this patient attended a few months back with severe right otalgia, so right ear pain. They've been going backwards and forth with the GP, various medications uh, with no improvement. And if anything, the pain was getting worse. When we examined the ear, the ear canal itself was completely clear. There's no obstruction, there's no wax, uh, no dead keratin obstructing and including the ear canal. However, there's a lot of discharge. Um, it was really wet. And the ear canal itself actually doesn't look like it's infected, however. So I was trying to, uh, trying to fathoming where this discharge was coming from. Now, I'm just using microsuction initially. I just cleared the entrance of the ear canal where the majority of this discharge was. But you can see I'm now going deeper and deeper into the ear canal and I'm using a fine end gauge and I'm just gently just suctioning all this discharge. It's otter ear, we call it otter ear. And I'm just almost following the trail to see where this is coming from. And we are approaching the patient's medial ear canal, so the inner two thirds and here is the isthmus, the narrowing of the ear canal, and now we're in the inferior recess. Now this inferior recess is, it's a lot more widened um, than normal. So it's, it could have just be the patient's born with a very wide and uh, uh, widened inferior recess, an annulus region we call it. But my suspicion is, is this um, the infection the patient's experiencing and all this discharge is collecting in this basin, this trench, and it's causing erosion of the annulus, hence why it's a lot wider. So we've more or less cleared all the discharge from the base of the ear canal. Now, if you look at the top of the eardrum, more specifically to the posterior superior quadrant, so posterior means the back part of the eardrum and superior means the top, we have this wet, what appears to me dead skin so patient was obviously um experienced a lot of discomfort prior to attending so i'm just being really really gentle here and i'm just using a fine end gauge because my suspicion is is that the patient has got a cholesteatoma hiding behind this wet dead keratin that i'm trying to just gently suction and it was a bit crusty as well and i'm just slowly approaching it so what's a cholesteatoma now, a cholesteatoma is a collection of dead skin cells that typically collects in a retraction pocket. Now, your eardrum, if you think about your eardrum being like um, cling film, it can easily get sucked in if you've got negative middle ear pressure behind the eardrum. So the air pressure, the middle ear, so the cavity behind the eardrum should be full of air, should be air filled. And the air pressure should be equal to the atmosphere. And there's a little tube behind the eardrum called the eustachian tube that connects to the back of the nose, uh, more specifically the nasopharynx that regulates the air pressure. Um, so if that eustachian tube gets blocked typically at the back of the nose, it, that means there's no air behind the eardrum. So the eardrum gets sucked inwards, it's a vacuum effect. And that typically can create uh, a pocket at the top of the eardrum, um, a retraction pocket, because the the eardrum at the top, uh, the pars, we call it the pars placida, is it's a lot thinner um, than the rest of the eardrum. We call that the pars tensor. So the top part, the eardrum at the top of the, the membrane at the top of the eardrum is easily susceptible to be sucked in when there's negative pressure, which creates a pocket. Now, Dead skin that lines the ear canal and the outer layer of the eardrum, as that skin dies and shed, it should, na it should naturally migrate out of the ear in the conveyor belt motion. Um, if it doesn't, um, and if you've got a pocket at the top of the eardrum, this skin cells, it collects in the pocket and it doesn't no longer migrates out of the ear. And eventually this dead skin, it collects, it gets bigger, um, it grows inwards and also outwards, and we call that a cholesteatoma, and it gets infected. And this cholesteatoma can grow and grow and grow. It can intrude into the middle ear cavity. It can go into the mastoid uh, cavity. It can, in the worst case scenario, it can grow towards the top of the brain um, where the meninges are. Um, it can cause meningitis. It can cause a brain abscess. 
Uh, it can cause facial palsy because you've got the facial nerve running at the back of the eardrum, which can then, which can cause uh, uh, the one side of your face to droop. And uh, there's the cholesterol Now we've had this confirmed since. So the, we referred the patient to um, an ENT colleague who um, got the patient to undergo a CT scan and. The CT scan confirmed the presence of a cholesterol tumor. Cholesterol tumor is quite deep in growing, and they're going to have, ma- have to have mastoid surgery performed, and that's because the cholesterol tumor is collected in the mastoid cavity, which is an atrium to the left. So the bone behind your ear, we call that the mastoid bone, and it's porous. Um, and this cholesterol tumor can get sucked into the atrium around the back of the eardrum. So they're going to have to have their mastoid bone drilled out, cholesterol removed. And just trying to get as much dead skin as I can. I can't get too much because, first of all, uh, we can see I've bent the fine end gauge here. But this skin was quite tough. But we can now, the, the, the main objective of the, what I was trying to do is to see where this discharge, so this discharge was coming from this cholesterol It was dropping to the base of the, the eardrum in the basin, the inferior recess, what we call the annulus. And... Because it was infected, it was eroding um, the base of the ear canal near the eardrum, the annulus. That's why it was widening. And some of this discharge was then trickling out of the, out of the ear canal. Hence why there's a lot of discharge near the front of the, uh, the ear canal, which I cleared at the beginning of the procedure. But I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. It was an interesting one. Um, I found it quite fascinating, uh, just with the view as well that we managed to get with the endoscope, the eye clear scope. Have a wonderful Sunday and I shall speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.